It was the Nordiques who worked the magic in last night's fifth and deciding game. Rob Allen picks up the story with Buffalo nursing what became an uncomfortable two-goal third-period lead. After Phil Housley gave Buffalo its second two-goal lead, the Sabres inexplicably abandoned their style of playing the kind of desperate hockey that helped win games three and four. They were outshot 26-9 in the final two periods and started to wilt when Elaine Cote scored to make it 5-4 at 11-12 of the third. The Sabres became completely unglued when Randy Moeller got a fluke goal to tie it exactly 64 seconds later. By now, the Nordiques had taken complete advantage of the Sabres' passive approach. They turned up the heat until Brent Ashton, who came to Quebec from Minnesota for Tony McKegney slipped in the game winner with a minute and nine seconds left in regulation. Mike Foligno got what could have been the tying goal in the final seconds but was ruled offside. Replays appeared to show Foligno and his teammates had a legitimate beef. There was a lot of soul searching in the dressing room afterwards but few explanations as to how the Sabres could have blown not one but a pair of two goal leads. We got uh, beaten on our strong suit which, is, uh, which has been good checking and the ability to, to protect a lead, uh, we have lost the lead on a few occasions, but over the course of the season, uh, we probably uh, protected the lead a lot more. I think maybe it was a combination of us kind of playing more defensively and, and Quebec just really turning it on. It happened so fast. You know, we're kind of we're kind of satisfied with the tie at the time, and all of a sudden Ashton puts the winner in. It's a great feeling, though. You know, the guys worked really hard. There's some tired bodies in this dressing room. I think there'll be a few tired bodies in the other dressing room, too. Coming on the boards, went up one of their winger skates, and I was able to pick it up and go around. I saw Wolf stand in front, screen him, so I just tried to keep it low and hope he wouldn't see it. And as it happened, uh, Wolf screened him, and the puck was able to go inside the far left post. While the Sabres are to be commended for a fine effort in Game 5, the bottom line still reads, first round elimination for the second straight year. This is Rob Allen, Channel 7 Eyewitness Sports in Quebec City. Scotty Bowman is getting plenty of heat over his coaching tactic last night, and no doubt some of the more hard-nosed fans will be calling for a coaching change. For sure, there will be player changes. One of them involves the future of Jim Schoenfeld, who left a coaching job in Rochester to play again in Buffalo. What's your future as a player? Well, as far as a player, I, I'm sure this is it. I think uh, my body would completely rebel if I told it I was going to try it again. Uh, and uh, as far as the future goes, I'll just uh, wait and see what happens this summer. Uh, but physically, I just don't think I'm able to play any longer. I have too many things that have been broken or on the verge of breaking. And uh, it's, just, it's just no fun playing when, when things are hurting all the time. And uh, and then you just can't do the job that, that you want to do or that you intend to do or the club would like you to do. And uh, and for that reason, I, I'm, I'm going to pack it in. I hate to be the Sabres. All this summer, they're going to have people asking them, what happened in the third period? They played well in this uh, play they did. series. They did. But, Two and a half uh, games. I wanted to be in Montreal today, and I'm, I'm, I know about 25 other guys that wanted to be too. Well, no matter how you try to replay last night's third period between the uh, Sabres and the Nordiques, it doesn't change the fact that the Sabres are out. Quebec goes on to meet Montreal in the Adams Division Finals. Sabres, who had roared back from a 2-0 series deficit to force the fifth game, looked good. 3-1 in the first period. Gilles Perrault's second of the game. Ruff had scored first. However... Quebec came back to tie it. Sabres, though, leading 4-3, then up that to 5-3 early in the third as Phil Housley's wrister beats Mario Goslin. 5-3, but then the Sabres, with each team a man short, that's Bergeron's favorite strategy. Suckers a player off the ice with a coincidental penalty, even though Sealing didn't retaliate. And here you see Elaine Cote makes it 5-4. And after that, the Sabres go into a little bit of a defensive shell, and then it's all Nordiques. Michel Goulet, best player in the series, ties it here and with just over a minute to go the Sabres trying to clear the puck out of their own end around the boards it comes off Sears skate right to Brent Ashton and he beats Barasa who never saw the puck to the far side with the game winner and I asked Bowman about why the Sabres went into that shell after getting that two goal lead in the third period yeah I think we were pretty good in our own though you know we've been a pretty good team in our own end and uh, uh, but it was a breakdown on a faceoff. I mean we yeah. we had that happen before to us uh, I don't think Perot missed the faceoff. the puck lay there and uh, you know uh, faceoffs are a very very important part of the game and uh, you know we, we it didn't tie the game up but it allowed them to get right back into the game I think if we could have recovered that and I'm not sure if I could have done it over I would have done it differently but you don't have a second chance yeah. 
Well, we just sat back too much in the third period uh, after we got that fifth goal and tried to pick Kitty by the door, and they're in a great offensive club. And uh... Well, and that was that. I talked to others in a very quiet Sabres locker room. You know, I thought uh, at least we had some character to come back. Uh, it, was, it was too easy just to go three straight. Uh, I thought uh, a lot of the guys had a lot of guts. and. Uh, yeah, we were close, but, you know, it doesn't, that counts in horseshoes and not hockey, it's too bad because, you know, I, I, we had some really good efforts. You know, we came close, but uh, it's kind of like two years ago where we lost in the uh, seventh game in Boston. and, uh, you know, you can taste it and and yet it uh, it's gone. And it's all over, but that's the nature of the game and uh, someone has to be out, but... Uh, Boy, I wish it wasn't us. Well, Sean Fell's playing days are no doubt over, but I think his coaching future is very bright. Now, as was the case last year, there was a lot of speculation about whether or not Scotty Bowman will stay on with the Sabres. There's talk he might have an offer from Vancouver, but I asked Scotty if he expects to be here next year. Same thing, Eddie. We're not going to, you know, uh, that's, you know, you, you say something now, yes or no, and then you want to sit down and, and that's a decision you have to take your time and make the right decision because you can't make it that quick. Well, if you expect me to lead the charge for the oust Scotty campaign, you're in for a big disappointment. The foundation for a strong club is here, but some changes are going to have to be made. And there isn't a better man available in the game to do that than Scotty Bowman. Now, maybe you say, hey, a new face behind the bench wouldn't hurt. But uh, I think Bowman also is the best coach available. Now, one never knows when a talented club will mature. Uh, fans, I know, were impatient. Peter Stasny carries in, is knocked down, but Michelle Goulet and Randy Moeller follow up. Moeller makes contact. The Sabres' Craig Ramsey deflects it into his own net. Moeller gets credit as Quebec makes it 5-5. And then with just a minute nine to play, Brett Ashton gives the Nordique the series, banking it in off the far post and past Tom Barrasso to make it 6-5 as Quebec eliminates Buffalo in five games. The Nordique open against the Canadians in Montreal Thursday night here on CBC. And straight first round exit from postseason competition. Tonight, Rob Allen examines the future of the club and its general manager and coach, Scotty Bowman. How you perform in the playoffs is seemingly all that matters in pro hockey these days, and the record shows the Sabres are out for the second straight season in the first round. Twice in a row, they've been eliminated by a Quebec Nordique club that entered the NHL after the supposedly inferior World Hockey Association folded. I asked the Nordique's fiery coach, Michel Bergeron, why his club has been able to accomplish so much in a comparatively short period of time. We build a team around the key guys, uh, players with character, and uh, the, the our draft choices uh, since uh, five years are uh, are doing so well for us. Ah, yes, those draft choices. The Sabres have a slew of first-rounders in their lineup, yet both the Nordiques and Montreal proved to have better teams in the Adams division alone. There's a lot of good things that happen. Um, but so what? You know, we still lost. Uh, I'm sure there will be changes made. I, I don't can't speculate on where. I really don't, wouldn't know what to say, you know, I wouldn't know what to tell you or to expect next year, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot of talent here, we've got a good hockey club, uh, you know, it's just tough to say what's, what's in the future. Sabres coach and general manager Scotty Bowman said it was also difficult to say what the future holds for him. Bowman refused to speculate on... I mean, really, uh, you know, thinking it over, uh, ceiling I thought showed a lot of good, good restraint. But, uh, you know, uh, they're human beings. You know they're not going to, they're not, I mean, I wasn't fooling myself thinking that they were going to give them a penalty and not, and, and not a penalty to us. But um, we'd like to have not had the four on four, but uh, you can't hang a series on one play. Uh, no, really, uh, we had the lead before that. We had two goal lead uh, going into the last 10 minutes of the period. Well, no doubt about that, the Sabres, who were very aware of the fact they couldn't go into a defensive shell, did just that and paid for it. Well, there's been a lot said and written recently out of town, mainly, that Scotty Bowman is badly wanted by Vancouver and maybe another team or two. And I asked him after the game if he would be back next year. The same thing, Eddie. We're not going to, you know, uh, that's, you know, you, you say something now, yes or no, and then you want to sit down and, and that's a decision you have to take your time and make the right decision because you can't make it that quick. Well, make no mistake, it would be very bad news for the Sabres should Bowman move on by his choice or theirs. 
Because of his past success, a lot of people feel that, hey, he's had time to bring Buffalo a Stanley Cup by now. If he's made a mistake, it could be that he's expected too much of some young players who have not been able to play well under pressure. Maybe that's a draft problem, but no matter what, Scotty Bowman is still by far the best man for the job. In the American Hockey League playoffs tonight, Ron... To. Well, we did. You know, we never quit, and uh, that's what we have to do every game. You get down two goals, you can't quit. you got to keep you know, skating that much harder and working that much harder. J.F. Sove, a former Sabre sent to the Nordique in that big deal two years ago, proved to be very pesky. Last night he had a goal and two assists, playing very well for the injured Anton Stasny. The disappointment of losing a fifth and deciding game brought out some angry comments from several of the Sabres about the officiating of referee Brian Lewis. We get the short end of the stick from the officiating. I don't know whether it's, a, whether it's, whether it's our location, our organization, our players or what, but you know, I tell you, talk to guys that go to other teams and and that have played here, and they can really notice the difference in the officiating compared to you know compared to here. Without you talking about, Paymont gives you a shot in the face, and, and you get two for roughing. They get the four on four situation they love so much with the open ice and score a goal. Exactly, that's you know, that's what I'm saying. They, uh, I never did a thing. I backed off. I figured you know he's got two minutes and I've got nothing, and, and uh, all of a sudden uh, I'm in the penalty box and I'm trying to figure out what I did. And, and uh, I'm asking him, he won't answer me, and he says that that was the end of it, you know. And uh, they scored the goal, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's what they wanted. Uh, we've been sucked into a lot this year. Uh, you know, it's not our, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't relate it to our fault. Uh, Rick did exactly what he should have done. He didn't do a thing. Just sat there, Pamela punched him in the head, and he just he backed off. And we ended up getting uh, short into the stick, and, you know, that's the kind of thing that hurts us. And, those things always seem to find a way to, to catch, up with, catch up with us in the end. It remains to be seen what moves will be made by the Sabres organization. Recaps the up and down 84-85 season. Between December 1st and the All-Star break, the Sabres were the hottest team in hockey. They were 14, 4, and 8, losing just 4 of 26 games, climbing to the top of the Adams division and 4th overall. But from there, the second half was devastating. They went 11, 14, and 2. Uh, it seemed during the second half that it just was one thing after another. We had the injury to Billy Height. We had the injury to Dave Andrichuk. When things looked like they were coming back into place, Tommy came up uh, with this allergy. And you have to be strong enough to offset these type of things. I mean, it shows that we're not where we want to be because uh, Billy Height is a veteran defenseman. But the team just didn't play close to the, to the game in front of, in front of our, uh, without Billy than they did with him. Conclusion, the best defensive team in the NHL needs to be healthy. And what about more offensive punch? I think there's a room for improvement, naturally, on, on some of the individual players. Uh, but I don't think you're going to go out and, uh, and uh, make a major trade to get uh, real bona fides. There's going to be some, some, I mean, holes in them. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just hoping that uh, fellows like Andrichuk and Tucker and... Uh, and unfortunately, Lindy Ruffy was scoring a uh, goal every three games this year. And, uh, you know, Mike Felino's a uh, goal player that we felt would score more than a goal every three games. And So the Sabres recognize the need, but Scotty will stick to his guns for now. West Gulf with New Center 2 Sports.